Hello everyone. The pronghorn is renowned for its remarkable speed, capable of reaching up to 55 miles per hour. This impressive ability makes it the second fastest land animal in the world, only behind the cheetah. However, unlike the cheetah, the pronghorn can sustain high speeds for much longer distances, making it a fascinating subject for biologists and wildlife enthusiasts alike. Today, join us as we explore the causes, characteristics, and activities of pronghorn antelope hunting in the United States. Don't forget to leave a comment with the number one to show your excitement. Several physical adaptations contribute to the pronghorn's extraordinary speed. Its large trachea, heart, and lungs are perfectly engineered for efficient oxygen intake and circulation, providing the stamina needed for sustained high-speed chases. Additionally, the pronghorn's specialized hooves play a crucial role. Each hoof has two long padded and pointed to nails that absorb shock and provide stability during rapid movements, ensuring the animal maintains its speed and agility even on rough terrain. However, this combination of speed and agility poses significant challenges for hunters. The pronghorn's ability to sprint at high speeds and make swift, unpredictable movements makes it a formidable target. Before embarking on a pronghorn hunting expedition, hunters must fulfill several pre-hunt requirements to ensure a lawful and ethical experience. Obtaining a full hunting license is paramount, as it demonstrates that the hunter has met all necessary legal criteria to participate in the hunt. Additionally, equally important is a thorough understanding of state-specific regulations, which can vary significantly. These regulations encompass various aspects of the hunt, such as season dates, bag limits, and permissible hunting methods. Adhering to these requirements not only promotes responsible hunting practices, but also contributes to the conservation efforts aimed at sustaining healthy pronghorn populations. Choosing the right gun is crucial for a successful pronghorn hunt. Hunters often prefer sniper rifles such as the Remington Model 700 and the W2U 43 Winchester for their precision and reliability. These firearms, when paired with high-quality scopes, offer the accuracy needed for long-distance shots typical in pronghorn hunting. The combination of a powerful rifle and a clear, high magnification Scope enables hunters to target pronghorns effectively from distances of 200 to 300 yards or more, ensuring a clean and humane shot. Pronghorn hunting is renowned for its unique set of challenges making it a true test of a hunter's skill and perseverance. One of the most significant obstacles is the open terrain where pronghorns typically reside. Unlike other game animals that might inhabit dense forests or rugged mountains, pronghorns are often found in vast, open plains and grasslands. Have you ever experienced the difficulties of hunting in open terrain or had to quickly adapt to changing weather conditions? 
Another major challenge is the variable weather conditions that can greatly impact the success of a pronghorn hunt. The wide open landscapes that pronghorns call home are susceptible to sudden and dramatic weather The population of bighorn sheep in the USA currently stands at approximately 80,000 individuals. These remarkable animals are commonly found in a variety of habitats across the country, particularly in the states of California and New Mexico. Additionally, they are well adapted to the arid conditions of the Mojave and Sonoran deserts, where they thrive despite the harsh environment. These diverse habitats provide the necessary conditions for the bighorn sheep to sustain their populations and continue their vital role in the ecosystem. Common in many areas of Florida, are gradually moving into urban areas, creating a lot of chaos. This increase is due to many reasons, including urban development encroaching on their natural habitat, along with the attraction of easy food sources in the city. In the bustling pace of urban life, baboons show incredible adaptability. They often rummage through trash cans in search of food, risk destroying orchards, and even break into houses in search of food. Their natural curiosity and complex social structure drive constant exploration, helping them fully exploit new food sources in complex urban environments. One of the serious consequences of baboons appearing in urban areas is their aggressive behavior towards humans. These attacks not only cause injuries, but also stir up deep fear in people's hearts, directly affecting their daily activities and habits. Faced with these challenges, is it really necessary to control Florida's baboon population? If you agree, please press number 1. If you disagree, please press number 0 in the comment section below. In response to baboon intrusions, residents have installed electric fences, an effective protective measure designed to deliver non-fatal electric shocks. This fence consists of many electrical wires capable of shocking but not causing serious injury to the animals. However, using electric fences raises ethical concerns regarding the degree of human intervention in the natural behavior and habitat of wildlife to protect property. Additionally, animals may be subjected to repeated electric shocks or in rare cases are at risk of becoming trapped or entangled in fences leading to injury. The second method is the use of traps, a common technique to control baboon populations, the deployment of which has proven effective in various localities where human-baboon interactions are high.
usually happen. These traps are meticulously designed to withstand the baboon's considerable strength, while also being large enough to hold multiple individuals at once. Bait prepared from fruits, vegetables, and many other particularly attractive foods is placed inside a cage. When the monkey approaches and enters the cage to retrieve the prey, its weight or movement triggers an automatic mechanism, slamming the cage door shut. However, the fundamental ethical issues involved in the use of traps are not only those of suffering and death of trapped animals, but also those of stress and injury. That they cause. There is also a risk of inadvertent capture of species that were not originally targeted especially in rural areas, where baboons are often considered pests. Farmers sometimes use guns to protect their crops. However, hunters need to ensure that they have all their licenses and government-issued hunting tags before starting the hunting process. There have been documented cases where farmers have had to use guns to control baboon populations, a threat to agricultural productivity. However, using guns to control baboon populations carries many risks from a safety perspective. Improper use can cause injury or even accidental death to people, especially in densely populated areas or near communities. One of the serious consequences of baboons appearing in urban areas is their aggressive behavior towards humans. These attacks not only cause injuries, but also stir up deep fear in people's hearts, directly affecting their daily activities and habits. In response to baboon intrusions, residents have installed electric fences, an effective protective measure designed to deliver non-fatal electric shocks. This fence consists of many electrical wires capable of shocking but not causing serious injury to the animals.
Additionally, animals may be subjected to repeated electric shocks or, in rare cases, are at risk of becoming trapped or entangled in fences, leading to injury. The United States is currently home to an estimated 3.5 million bobcats. From the vast deserts of Texas to the rolling hills of California and the dense forests of Minnesota, bobcats thrive in a wide variety of landscapes. But what does this mean for human communities? Join us as we explore the fascinating world of bobcats, the challenges they pose, and the steps being taken to manage their presence in our backyards. Don't forget to leave a comment with your number one to show your excitement. In the tranquil pastures and bustling farms across America, a silent predator lurks, causing havoc for farmers. With their sharp claws and stealthy prowess, Bobcats often target goats and chickens, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. These attacks are not just isolated incidents. They have a profound economic impact, costing the agricultural sector approximately $137.7 million annually. Each goat or chicken lost represents not just a financial setback, but also the hard work and dedication of farmers the substantial economic toll underscores the urgency for effective measures to protect livestock and poultry from these cunning predators. Besides, these agile predators often target dogs and cats, turning tranquil backyards into unexpected battlegrounds. For pet owners, the impact goes beyond the loss of a furry friend. It's a profound emotional blow, compounded by the financial strain of vet bills and replacement costs. These challenges highlight the urgency of effective measures to protect livestock and poultry from these cunning predators. So what methods have hunters and farmers used When it comes to managing the bobcat population, foot traps are one of the most effective tools used by wildlife control experts. Among these, jaw traps are particularly popular due to their sturdy design and reliability. These traps are specifically engineered to snap shut with precision, ensuring that the bobcat is securely held without causing excessive injury. Available in sizes tailored to the bobcat's physique, these traps are designed to maximize efficiency while minimizing harm. One of the key advantages of using foot traps in managing the bobcat population is their high effectiveness in capturing these elusive animals. Designed with precision, these traps are tailored to the bobcat's behavior and physiology, ensuring a high success rate in trapping efforts. Additionally, foot traps offer a significant ethical benefit. They are a non-lethal option. This humane approach means that instead of killing the bobcats, they are safely captured. 
This allows for the possibility of relocation, where the bobcats can be moved to more suitable habitats away from human settlements. Moreover, the use of foot traps brings ethical concerns to the forefront. Even when these traps are designed to minimize harm, there is always a risk of injury to the animals caught, whether they are the intended bobcats or other creatures. This potential for causing pain and suffering sparks debate over the humane aspects of using such traps, prompting the need for careful consideration and stricter regulations in their use. When it comes to controlling the bobcat population, hunters often rely on a variety of guns to get the job done effectively. Among the most popular choices are rifles and shotguns, each offering unique benefits tailored to different hunting scenarios. Rifles are favored for their precision and long-range capabilities, allowing hunters to target bobcats from a safe distance. This reduces the risk of the animal escaping and ensures a more accurate and humane kill. The choice of a gun can greatly influence the success and ethics of a hunt. Rifles, with their pinpoint accuracy, are less likely to cause unnecessary suffering as they can deliver a quick, clean kill. Shotguns, while powerful and effective at close range, must be used with caution to avoid harming other wildlife in the vicinity. The decision between using a rifle or a shotgun often depends on the specific environment and the hunter's personal preference. Do you believe this method is effective for controlling the bobcat population? If yes, please leave a on one. If not, share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section below. The effectiveness of using guns for controlling the bobcat population is evident in the annual hunting results. Each year, hunters successfully capture and remove approximately 1 million bobcats from various regions across the United States. This significant number showcases the role that hunting plays in managing and maintaining a balance within the ecosystem. The ability to control such a large population helps mitigate the damage bobcats can cause to livestock, pets, and even local wildlife. However, this also raises important questions about sustainability and ethical hunting practices. Can we continue to manage bobcat populations effectively without compromising on the welfare of the animals or the integrity of the ecosystem? If you enjoyed this journey, please show your support by liking or subscribing to the channel and sharing your thoughts. Now, let's explore the next fascinating invasive species. we will delve into the fascinating world of wolves. 
In the United States, the wolf population is estimated to be approximately 21 million, with significant concentrations in specific states, notably California and Nevada, have the highest wolf densities. This dense distribution emphasizes the urgent need for effective management and control measures to address the challenges posed by this growing wolf population. Join us as we explore their habitat and developmental behavior, along with strategies to protect both peats and communities. The presence of wolves in the United States has a significant economic impact on the livestock industry, with losses estimated at $30 million per year. This damage mainly affects cattle, sheep, and goats, resulting in significant losses for farmers and ranchers. The extent of livestock losses varies according to areas where wolf predation rates are higher due to their concentrated populations. These losses not only put financial strain on individual livestock owners, but also affect the overall agricultural economy in these areas, requiring effective management and compensation strategies to reduce minimize the financial burden on the farm. Wolves have become an increasing public safety concern due to their attacks on humans. Although these attacks are relatively rare, their frequency and severity are increasing in certain areas, especially in areas where coyotes are encroaching on human habitat. This causes anxiety in the community, affecting daily activities and outdoor recreation plans. Strict management measures are needed to balance safety and conservation of this wildlife. The use of firearms is an effective and quick way to deal with wolves, including a structured process regulated by hunting licenses. An effective countermeasure to the growing wolf population is the use of guns. This method reduces wolf numbers immediately, can quickly relieve pressure on affected areas, prevents wolves from encroaching on populated areas, and thereby reduces the risk of attacks on humans and animals cattle However, significant concerns are the risk of abuse and accidents, which pose significant risks to human and pet safety. Furthermore, wolf shooting is ethically controversial and faces strong opposition from the public, as many people believe the practice is cruel and unnecessary. Additionally, a more humane and flexible approach to dealing with wolves is that traps can be monitored and adjusted as needed, ensuring safety and adaptability in managing wolf populations. This method also poses less immediate risk to human safety than other measures making it a safer alternative for both people and wildlife.
A major concern when using traps is the potential harm to non-target animals, as traps can unintentionally capture other wildlife, causing unintended ecological consequences. The process of setting and monitoring traps is time-consuming and labor-intensive, requiring significant effort and resources from those involved. These factors make the use of trapping a challenging and controversial approach to managing wolf populations. Addressing the challenges of managing wolf populations requires a multifaceted approach, combining scientific research and active community engagement to develop effective solutions. It is essential to invest in further research to explore the ecological role of wolves, their interactions with other wildlife and their impacts on with the local community. Please comment one if you support the further development of effective solutions to manage wolf population. the United States. The wild boar population has surpassed the 9 million mark and has spread throughout the states. Faced with this explosive situation, the United States has deployed the three most popular and effective strategies to control and reduce the number of this animal. Before we explore these methods, let's understand why feral pig removal has become such an urgent need for the American people. In Texas, one of the states with the most severe losses, feral pigs cause more than $52 million in damage to the agricultural industry each year. A typical example of this impact is that feral pig herds have completely destroyed many corn and wheat fields, causing significant damage to farmers. In California, wild pigs have become a severe threat to local ecosystems in areas such as San Jose, causing significant consequences for native plants and animals. Their invasion has led to severe destruction of native plants, degrading essential habitat for the California red-legged frog, a species at risk of extinction. States like Texas, Florida, and California are popular places to hunt feral hogs with bows and arrows. The dense forest and brush areas in these states create ideal habitat for feral hogs, making them a favorite destination for bow hunting enthusiasts. In particular, bow hunting is not only an elegant choice but also an effective method to save costs. Arrows can be reused many times, as long as they are not lost or seriously damaged, helping hunters minimize the cost of buying bullets. Therefore, the cost associated with hunting will be significantly reduced in the long run.
However, hunting wild boar with a bow requires extremely close approaches, usually around 30 yards, placing the hunter in a dangerous position because wild boars are unpredictable animals, ready to react violently when they feel threatened or hurt, making this hunting even more challenging and risky. Additionally, hunters need to master archery skills, which often poses a challenge for new hunters. The use of bows and arrows requires precise and decisive shots to ensure effective defeat of wild boars, avoiding causing unnecessary suffering. In short, bow hunting not only scores points for its traditional value, but is also environmentally friendly. However, to master this method, hunters need to seriously invest in skill training, physical preparation, and adherence to ethical principles in hunting. Another popular method of hunting wild boar is using a shotgun. Many states and regions encourage the use of shotguns instead of rifles in populated or semi-populated areas because shotguns are considered safer. The 12-gauge shotgun is the popular choice due to its superior power and versatility, while the 20 gauge has proven equally effective with the right ammunition. The barrel varies in length from 18 to 28 inches, providing the perfect balance between maneuverability and accuracy. Shorter barrels are often used in tight spaces, while longer barrels are suitable for longer and more accurate shots. These guns provide quick and accurate response, which is essential in unforeseen situations, such as when wild boars suddenly burst at the bushes. However, shotguns have clear limits on their effective shooting distance, usually to ensure an accurate and humane shot the ideal distance should not exceed 35 yards. When the distance exceeds this limit, the accuracy and effectiveness of the bullet will decrease significantly. In particular, being proficient in using a shotgun in the bush or dense forest where wild boars frequent, requires a significant level of skill. The final and most effective method is to use helicopters, which are highly appreciated in controlling the wild boar population. This method attracts particular attention in areas where wild boars pose major risks to agriculture, biodiversity, and Choosing the suitable helicopter is key to improving effectiveness in managing wild boar from the air. Helicopter models such as the Robinson OR-44 and Hughes 500, prized for their versatility and ability to operate at low altitudes, are top choices for this task.
Since then, helicopters have become indispensable tools in navigating and accessing dangerous areas where wild boars often live, especially in large fields where herds of wild boar regularly move back and forth across large areas of farms. The helicopter's ability to quickly and comprehensively observe from above has revolutionized the way we manage and monitor wild boar. However, even so, using helicopters to control wild boar herds costs a significant amount of money. This total cost includes renting specialized aircraft, paying experienced pilots, and paying professional gunners. Furthermore, aircraft maintenance and fuel costs also contribute to the overall cost of these management efforts. 